All right, so some of these are repeats, but some of them are new. Um, so Prox 1 was released. Uh, reminder, uh, and I just realized I do have a typo in the project. Um, originally, it was uh, going to be partner-based, but it's actually group-based. So you can work with your group from the discussion section on the project. So you can submit it all together, um, and you can work together on it. So please feel free to do so. You know, kind of cheating rules apply, right, for any other groups, right, any other people. But uh, as far as within your group, uh, you know, you're encouraged to collaborate. Um, it's usually one of the best ways to kind of learn things, I think, at least related to this uh, space. Um, one remark, oh, I strongly recommend trying to do it in person or like over Zoom uh, to work on it together rather than breaking it up into sections, uh, because that way you can kind of all learn the stuff to go through it, because you will not be taking the exams, for example, as a group. Uh, so it's important that you all learn whatever it is, but at least you can help each other to figure things out. Um, Midterm, no change there. Um, but on lecture, or sorry, next Tuesday is a Monday schedule. So that means any office hours that are normally on Monday will be on Tuesday. And any Tuesday office hours will also not be on Tuesday. Okay, they'll just be canceled. All right, so uh, look at the Monday schedule for office hours and they'll apply on Tuesday. So my office hours are 3 to 5 30 on Monday. So on Tuesday, it will be that time. Um, but we also don't have lecture. So uh, you can come here if you like. Uh, but there's probably another class. Let's see, was there anything else? Um, oh, another thing, uh, kind of a tip. Um, a lot of people have been coming to Office Hours, whatever, with various network uh, issues. Um, if you if basically keep an eye in the top right corner of your Jupyter notebook, of what it might give an error that says something like can't reach the kernel or something like that. That means that you don't have a connection to it. It is, it may be that. You didn't set a long enough time, and so it's not the server's not running anymore. But more likely is that your connection to the internet is not good. Um, and if it's not good, it will cause that problem, and everything will start acting kind of strangely. What I would recommend is before trying to fix it too much, make a copy, like just if you have to, like kind of go through each cell and copy paste into like notepad or something off to the side, just in case it doesn't save. Okay, some problems working with online tools. Um, so, but just if you make a copy off, off of it, it'll it auto saves every couple of minutes. So it's likely that it caught your last changes. But if you don't notice for a while, that can be a problem. So just keep that in mind. Um, I completely agree. It's incredibly annoying. Um, the other thing to try, uh, just because it might be your computer. Uh, try a different browser, um, and if you're using a Mac, going from Chrome to Safari doesn't really count because I believe underneath the same browser. Um, but going from Chrome to Firefox might help, or going from Safari to Firefox uh, might help. It could be better. The other thing is try doing a full cache cleaner. Okay. Uh, another tip is that when you're starting to see strange things like that, it could be that you're out of disk space. Okay, so that would be something else to check. Make sure you have some spare room on your hard drive. Because if you're out of disk, all sorts of things start going weirdly because lots of things try to write to your disk all the time. So try those things, um, you know, and hopefully it will be better. Um, but I think the network changes they've been doing for the Andrew Room stuff have made Wi Fi here particularly bad this semester. Any questions? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, good call. Uh, so the, the attendance of the chaos is posted up. Uh, let's say the number is five. All right, starting with your question. Uh, when you're writing a function, uh, what do you start with? Oh, that was the other thing I was going to say. I had a new, multiple people come uh, with this one uh, kind of lingo tip. Okay. Code. Like sheep, thank you, uh, uh, is singular and even when it's plural. Okay, so it's always code, not codes. Up, okay, if you say codes to anyone who is like a programmer for a living, you will sound like a newbie. So it's always code, always singular. Um, and so when you're writing a line of code, right, or you have a file of code, um, and uh, yeah, and each one is a line of code, not every individual line is a code. If that makes sense. So 
just from a like I said, window perspective, it's one of the ones that uh personally it's kind of a pet peeve of mine uh for no particularly good reason. Um, but uh, you know, just so you can uh you know use the lingo correctly. All right, so when coding a function, what do you start with? So how do you how do you write a function? Um All right, get your answers in. Yeah. All right, three, two, one. All right, most you got it. Um, so the answer is DAP, right? The way to remember it is it's short for define, okay? All right, so uh, just kind of covering this again, multiple parameters are very useful, very common uh, when you're using a method that will take more than one. So just keep in mind, uh, they're there. Uh, as soon as you, you can name them, you can use the name of it uh, as the way to assign a value to it. Uh, or but as soon as you do one, all the rest have to be named, okay? Um, and they're separated by commas, um, and you can basically have as many as you want. Um, it's generally considered kind of bad form to have a ton of them if they're always required, okay? So for example, I think the plot method, I wanna say, had, or actually, yeah, I think the plot method has like a taste a ton of them, but you don't need them most of the time. So kind of fine, um, but just kind of from a design perspective, normally you don't make them too long because it's too many to remember. So you might want to break that function off if you need it to do, uh, if you need all those parameters, you might want to make it multiple functions that call each other. Um, then apply uh, is again, a very useful method. Uh, we use it a lot um, and you can use it to apply a particular method to every row in a table and pass the each value from the reference column as a parameter to the method. So you can have uh, multiple parameters to your method and it'll, you can have a list of columns and it'll pass each element. All right, getting into grouping a little bit more. Um, so the group method is an aggregator, uh, which you know may be an unfamiliar word for you, but it just means the same thing with those in English, which is just group things together, okay? And aggregate is the same word, but fancier. Um, and so it aggregates them all together, uh, the reason I point that out is because when I'm trying to like give a question or something and I can't say the word group, I might use the word aggregate. Um, so, so yeah, it'll group all of the same type of thing together. Um, and so the first argument is which column to group by. And then the second argument, while optional, so if you don't pass one, it's just going to do a count, okay, of all the items in that group. Um, but you can also uh, pass another argument. Um, and so some common ones are len, which is length, right? Which is the same as count, okay? Um, and list, so that would be the list of all group values. Um, and then the sum, you can add them all up. Um, you can do things like average, right? If you want the average. Um, well, actually, I guess I added a little more variable. Oh, no, no, average should work. Um, all right, so. You just saw them, I just mentioned them, so just map them up. Uh, so anybody who is late, the attendance poll number is five. All right, get it in. Three, two, one. Yeah, 
And so uh, lead is the number of them. Uh, this is all of them. And some is the total, uh, the math, right? The sum. Oh, well, one thing I want to mention, another thing that people keep coming by with, uh, people have been using np.sum to sum things up. There is actually just a built-in function called sum, so you don't need the np. Dot if you want, uh, it doesn't matter either way. It's just uh, it's a little bit less characters, and as you know, I don't like typing any more than I absolutely have. All right, so now we are going to talk about lists, for which we will switch to the notebook. This is wrong. Oh, I, I didn't name it correctly. Um, yeah, this is where I should. From doing stuff while uh, people are coming into your office for office hours. Okay, so we're going to start with uh, everyone's favorite function. Um, and okay, so we're gonna open eventually, maybe a table of ice cream cones someday. The whole idea of using this computer is that it should have a hardline network connection, it should not be this slow. All right, there it goes. I just have to get warmed up. All right, so as you can see, uh, ice cream cones have a flavor, they have a color, and they have a price. So the first thing I want to show you is uh, a simple grouping. Okay, so we just tell it what column we want to group by, and we're just going to count them up. Okay. So then, go over to sure next. Let's say we wanted to um, group by flavor, but we want the average price per flavor. And we want to get rid of, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, I'm scrolling the wrong place. Um, and we want to get rid of the um, column. Okay, so I do too far. So, so uh, that first set of question marks, what do you think goes there? So drop, right. And then the second one? Group and then the third one. What was that? Oh, you'll often hear me say, by the way, uh, group by rather than just group. Because in some other programming languages, it's actually the, the keyword is group by. So if I say that, what I mean is group. Um, so what's the last thing I want to put there? If I want to get the average price for uh, this flavor of ice cream. Uh, that will give me the total cost if I bought one of each flavor, I guess. Any other ideas? So you can do the division, but there's an easier way, which is using the average function, which is on NP. And so that will give us the flavor, but uh, they're all grouped by flavor and then the average price per flavor. Yeah. Does it matter if you write average or median? So this is a weird thing about NP. So um, it has both functions. Uh, they are the same in the vast majority of cases. One of them, and I can never remember which one, uh, it takes another parameter, which kind of changes the type of averaging it's doing. So as long as you're only using one parameter to it, uh, it they're interchangeable. Um, I tend to use average. I don't know why, uh, but you know, if you tend to use mean, that's totally fine as well. Um, okay, so now let's say we want to um, 
we want to know what the cheapest of every flavor is. Okay, so we can do kind of the same thing, except we're going to group. And then what would I look for? What would I use for my method for the group? I want the cheapest. And it is. You definitely use this one for me. Yeah. All right, and so now we can see this, and then we can move on. And so this is more about the survey. Um, and let's say I want to know what the average is for the group by, uh, sorry, of um, how much Python experience they have. Now, what I want to also point out here particularly, okay, is it's going to group by Python, right? But it's going to give me the average of all columns, right? So, what do you think is going on with the first, uh, technically first four, but the first four? What's going on there? Why are they blank? Because they're words. they're words, right? So, taking the average of words wouldn't work very well. So, instead of giving you an error, group just puts it as blank. Okay. All right, but now we can see what the averages are um, by Python skill. Um, and then, oops. So, oops, my next example. Oh, so now if I want to do the same thing, but I want to get rid of the annoying uh, content, I can do the drop first, then I can do the same thing, basically. Um, Yeah, it really does go counter to my uh, dislike of typing that I use average most of the time. Um, yeah. Oh, it's not? Yeah. Oh, shoot. <clears throat> it even said it was recorded. Like, it warned me. Okay, it should be recording now. Um, okay, so, sorry. So, um, yeah, so if I want to get rid of those empty columns, then I can do this, right? I can drop it first and then get rid of it, and it will just disappear. Pretty straightforward. Um, and then I just have another example of doing grouping, um, except we're going to group. Wait. Oh, sorry. Okay, so but I can also assign the result of the group to a variable. And this is important because you can't do this for the other thing we're going to talk about today and have it work correctly. So I'm going to make a new table called pi by skill, and it's going to have all those averages, right? But then it also has different columns. So I'm going to have to get rid of those before I try to plot it, okay? And so one of the ways you can use select is you can actually do it by number of the column rather than having to type in the whole name of each column. Does that make sense? So you can so it's a lot shorter, um, but you have to keep track of which column is which. So I'm going to take only columns 0, 5, 6, and 7, um, and then I'm going to plot using the Python. And so now I get uh, a nice little line graph with uh, the programming average, text use average, sleep average, et cetera. I don't know what this tells us exactly, but it's pretty, right? So there you go. All right. And then I can go here and show you. Um, Apparently the same thing again, so I'm not going to show you that. Uh, but we are going to talk about the slide or go back to the slides now. And so now we want to talk about we'll talk about this first. Yeah, let's do let's do the demo first. So we have another concept called a list. Okay. And so this this is a little bit, especially if you have a lot, if you have some Python experience, a list and an array are semi-synonymous, okay. If you come from a real Python background, when we're doing kind of the data science stuff, we tend to think about um, our arrays being the same type. Okay. And if you use that make array function, it will enforce it. So you'll know that that array is all numbers or all strings. Okay. Uh, whereas a list is meant to be for arbitrary things. Okay. So, and we'll talk about why that's important in a minute. Um, but what I can do is just show you how you make a list. So, Sorry. Oh, that's 
Um, one, five, eight. Okay, and so I can make, oh boy. So I can make a list um, and it just has arbitrary stuff in it. Okay, and I delineate it by putting square brackets around it. Um, and that's how I, I make a list. Uh, I'm going to get some feedback for a second. Scott, test, test. Um, sorry. I'm staring at the uh, Zoom screen and getting very confused with my thought. So, okay. So, three finger loop for in network bubble. Okay. So, I can make them arbitrarily complicated, right? I can put an array actually inside the list. Okay. I can put another list inside the list. You can put anything you want in there, you can put a table in there. Um, I'm not saying these are good ideas, but they are uh, they are pretty common, particularly to do arrays like that. And if you, I'll just kind of draw this on the board, but if you um, if you think about how it, it looks, sometimes it makes it easier to understand where stuff is. So if you imagine, and hopefully y'all can see this, but um, to imagine your array looks like this, right? It has some things in it, but that make array there is kind of like I did this. Right, so now it, it goes kind of down like that, right? Because there's another array embedded in it. So if you think about them in terms of like this, like kind of like this L almost, um, and then maybe you'd have another one, right? Like that. And sometimes easier to think about than trying to think about it like, you know, blah, 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 blah. Because you don't, you don't see the, what's usually referred to as the dimensionality of the array when you just kind of draw it like this. So this is how you write it, but if you think about it kind of in terms of a picture like that, sometimes it's easier to keep track of where things are. At least I think so. Okay, now for the slides. All right, so a list is a sequence of values, just like an array, but values can all have different types. So I think I said like six different ways from Sunday. Um, so, for example, like this. Um, however, from consistency perspective, it's nice in that that first position is still the zero width position. Okay, almost everything that you'll encounter uh, with Python, that the first position is always zero. Okay, um, which is one of the things that leads to off by line errors because you forget that. Um, so lists can be used to create table rows. So that's why they're important to us is because remember we said an array is what the columns are, right? And a, and a row is going to be a list um, because there are different types. And if you create a table column from a list, it will be converted to an array automatically. Um, so in other words, you can also use a list for a column, but you got to be careful because it's got to be the same type, right? All right, question. So what's the first position in a list? So, 
Right. Yeah, so then, three, two, one. And just keep in mind, we do use those, uh, how those are doing for uh, uh, participation rates. So uh, the correct answer is zero, uh, as you can see. Oh, no, actually, you can't see. Um, on the wrong page. But the correct answer is zero. And we're going to now talk about grouping by multiple columns. Why, you may ask, right? Because we talked about grouping, then we talked about lists. Now we're talking about grouping by multiple columns. Seems like they should go the other way. But surprisingly, you need a list in order to do grouping by multiple columns. So that's why we talked about a second. So we go back and just reread this table just to make sure we didn't mess it up. Um, and we go back to my cheat sheet. So if I want to group by two different things, what I do is I make a list here. Let's do handedness and sweet side. I hope all my columns are ready there. So now I can do a little bit more interesting thing, right? I can say, oh, this person is right-handed and they sleep on their left side. There's 34 of those. So what we can do is say, look for the most common, right? Which actually happens to be right-handed and left side sleeper, um, which I pick randomly, but worked out. Um, and then the least common is somebody who's left-handed and sits on their back. Okay, so you imagine how this might be useful. Obviously, this data set's pretty uh, simple, um, but that's what you can do, and you can kind of further get your groups. And that could be really, um, you definitely will use it a lot, like for the various homeworks and labs and stuff. Um, and just in general, it's pretty important. So you want to think about grouping um, and making sure that you want to have all the categories that you want for a particular thing, uh, and then you can count it out. All right, so that was a simple example of grouping by multiple columns. Um, and Okay, so a group method can aggregate all rows that share the combination of values in multiple columns. So um, it's basically the same as what we were doing before, but the reason we need to use that list in the first parameter, right, is because the second parameter, the second argument is uh, whatever method you want to use, right? So you can't, you know, it, it wouldn't know which one to use. So um, that's why you give it a list, um, or you can just give one there, um, and that's how you get uh, you know, multiple columns. Okay, so just kind of keep in mind, arrays are columns and lists are rows. And how many arguments can the group method take? Okay, get your answers in. So the wording of this question is very important. So just make sure you read it very carefully. Okay, so when you start using Top Hat, it will uh, by default put you in the paid plan because it's like a free trial. Okay. Eventually, it will say, your free trial is about to end. Please pay. You do not have to please pay. You can continue using the free version for this class. I'm not speaking for any other class. But so when you get that, you can kind of say, I want to stay on the, on the free plan. It's a, it's it's nice really? Yeah. yeah. They get rid of it? They cost money. Uh, all right. Well, I will. I will investigate. Uh, it, that used to be the case. Uh, so last semester, um, but I will check it out. Don't pay for it. Certainly not at this point. Um, I think we had about a third of the class or something that are using it in other classes where they were paying for it. Is that right? Raise your hand if you're already paying for it. Yeah. 
Right. So um, I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll get back to you by next week. Uh, what we should do. Okay. All right. So that means we will probably not get any answers. But the correct answer is two. And that's why this one's kind of tricky. You got to read the curve, you read very carefully. It only takes two arguments. It's just that one of those arguments can be a list, which kind of makes it feel like it has a list of arguments, right? Make sense? Okay, so to be careful, when we're doing this kind of work, um, most of the words matter a lot, okay? So it's really, so, you know, for example, um, what was it? Something. Something in the past couple days, I don't know, made it very clear to me that the person hadn't read the instructions on the project. Okay, I can't remember what it was exactly, but there was there was something that they asked me, and I was like, you know, it's right here in this paragraph in the instructions that you clearly did not read, otherwise you know the answer to this question. The reason I pointed out, and the reason I, I do question somewhat like this, is because the terminology that we're using has to be very precise. Um, and because otherwise we do the wrong thing or we end up with the wrong thing. Um, so just keep that in mind, you know, uh, the, the instructions are there for a reason, right? The question has the words in it for a reason. It's kind of why I explained what the word aggregate means, right? Um, et cetera, et cetera. Because when you're, especially if you're doing something that's more on your own, you have to be really, really careful that you're doing what you think you're doing. That's one of the biggest challenges. So often why, especially if you come to office hours with a, with a problem, I'll say, you know, instead of just trying to get this one line of code to work right, back up and break it up into pieces, make sure you're getting what you think you're getting at each step, and then kind of combine it all together and make sure it works, okay? So apologies on the trickeriness of the question, but it does make the point. All right, so now we'll talk about pet tables. All right, just by show of hands, I'm always curious, how many people have actually used the pivot table before? <coughs> One, like, oh, two, maybe? Um, oh, three, all right. Uh, so pivot tables, especially in like spreadsheet software, like Excel, uh, are ridiculously complicated. I don't know why, but like everything about trying to make a pivot table in a spreadsheet, uh, I find very, very complicated. Um, for us, uh, because we're doing Python, it's significantly easier. Um, and they're really handy for some cases. Okay. So let me go back to what I was going to show. So the prior graphic, or sorry, the prior thing where we did this grouping, um, like this isn't terribly complicated, but it's kind of complicated, right? In that um, it's kind of really long and there's, you know, a bunch of data in the row or in the columns. So what we can do is if we use a pivot table, it can make it a lot easier to kind of glance at it um, and understand what's there. So what we can do instead is we can say sleep side and handedness. <laughs> and we can end up with a, a kind of a nicer format for the result. Right, so this is kind of easier to read than the prior format, and so that's what pivot tables are really good for. One thing I'll caution you on, though, is that you can assign a pivot table to a variable like you can to almost anything else. It is almost always not going to work the way you expect it to. So I strongly recommend if you want to do further operations on the data there, use group. Right, so use group to get to the same place. And then kind of use pivot primarily just to display things. That makes sense. <laughs> invariably, I have at least you know five or ten questions every semester where um, somebody used the pivot table and then tried to do operations on it, and it did not go well. Um, so you can do it. It's just that it's super weird. So uh, I don't recommend it. Um, okay, so. That wouldn't be very useful unless we could kind of do some of the same stuff that we kind of group. So we are going to copy this part because we need this part. All right. But then I'm going to have two named arguments. 
And the other one is going to be textees. Or sorry, it's going to be values. And I'm going to give that the column name textees. And then I'm going to say collect. And what am I trying to collect? Oh, um, in the uh, average. Okay, so what this does is let me name my kind of original columns. But instead of kind of an arbitrary count, right, we want to be able to do the same thing we can do with a group, which is kind of say, hey, I actually want the juxtaposition, right, to be the text seeds, okay, not just a count of the people who uh, sleep on their back and are right handed. I want to know the people who sleep on their back and are right handed, how many people do they text on average? Okay, and so that's what this allows me to do. The values is what what data element is going to appear here, right, in, in kind of this area, and the collect is what method I'm going to use on that data. So, because I can only end up, with, right, if you look at it, right, I can only end up with one answer kind of in each cell, so I want this to be, in this case, the average, but I could do the sum, right, um, or something like that. So, Yeah, and just kind of by way of comparison, we can do, you know, here's kind of the same thing. Well, not quite the same thing, but similar um, using group. But, you know, I can throw the other column in there too. But the idea is that. Yeah, so this kind of gives you the same ballpark, the idea. Um, but there are some, there are some slight differences. But the point being is that that pivot table wouldn't be very useful if you had to always only use count, right? So you can actually put some value in there that's more interesting. And I'll show you a picture, which should hopefully make it clearer. So here's our pivot table, right? So column A, so the first column you pass in, column B, the second column you pass in, and then the values, what is the thing you're going to aggregate somehow? And then you, the very last thing is the method of aggregation. It has a default, which is count, or you can choose to do something else. Um, and yeah, and that's that's it. Okay, so when trying to choose one or the other one combo of grouping variables per row, any number of grouping variables, aggregate values of all other columns in the table and missing combinations are absent. Uh, one combo of grouping variables for entry is on a pivot table. Two grouping variables, columns and rows, aggregate values. So, uh, like, hopefully, you can see, right, a pivot table is much more limited than grouping, but it does kind of, it's a lot easier to present data with. All right, I think the next thing is a question, so we're going to skip that. All right. So, Which one of these the missing combinations are absent? And the answer is groups, which no one got right or wrong. Um, okay, and then we have another one. All right, so why don't we do this the old school way? Um, so test your comprehension, which one presents a table? If you believe it's grouped, raise your right hand. Right hand. Uh, and if you think it's pivot, raise your left hand. Go. All right, let's see which one. Keep your hands up, keep your hands up. Report on your neighbor. All right, and so the right answer oh, is pivot. So good job. Um, which is, so there's a, a conference I used to go to every year um, that has one of the best closing events ever is that they basically do this whole trivia game, right? And it's about the conference and about other random tech stuff too. And they have the entire group, everybody stands up. And you raise your right and left hand, uh, and then you report on each other if anybody tries to cheat. Um, and you sit down, but then at the end, uh, everybody gets to just pick out a bunch like from all this different swag. But it's a lot of fun because it's it'll be random things like how many tons of bananas were eaten at this conference. Uh, so very entertaining. Uh, if you come to my conference, which I run every year called DevConf.us, it's actually on BU's campus. Uh, it's uh, what do we have for dates? I think it's the end of August. Um, 
I do that at the end of that as well, uh, but there's also a bunch of good talks uh, and it's all about open source software. And my understanding is, is that uh, you can request from whoever it is that's in charge of these things, um, housing, uh, to actually move back in early so that you can attend the conference. Uh, the conference is also free. So if you're interested, you can follow up uh, later on for details, uh, but that would be in August of next week or early September, late August. It's like a week before school started. Um, okay. So the next thing I want to talk about briefly, um, maybe a little bit more, is this idea of joining tables. Okay, so imagine, right, that we have these CSV files um, and they have various pieces of data. And in this case, we have two of those files, okay? One of them has all the coupons for the various coffee places that are around here, okay? And then the other one has the actual like product offerings for all the coffee places around here and how much they are, okay? So, what I really want to be able to do, though, is combine those things and find out how much does it cost to get a milk tea, which I honestly have no idea if pavement has, but get a milk tea at pavement, okay? How much would it cost if I had the coupons, right? That's what I want to be able to figure out. So what I can do is I can take, if I have two tables that have some data that are the same, I can join them together into one table. So in this case, the data element that's the same is the name of the place, right? So in one column, or sorry, in one table, it's called location, and in the other one, it's called cafe, okay? So what I can do is a method like this, where I take one of the tables, kind of the one I want to be the one, okay? And I say dot join, which is the method, and then I pass in the first column is the, um, uh, the table, sorry, Yeah, the I just realized I didn't realize that the, the two tables aren't labeled. Um, so this table is um, the one called drinks, and that table is the one called discounts. Um, and so what I can do is I can say, okay, from this column, right, match this other table. Okay, so the discounts have to be loaded as a table, match that table with the column called location. Okay, so anywhere you see Cafe Nero you put in whatever it is from the coupons table, okay? Um, and if you notice, even though I have fewer rows in the discounts table, I'll repeat that data, right? Because Cafe Nero only has one coupon, which is 10%. And so I'm just gonna put 10% for every drink offering that they have. That makes sense? Okay, so joins are also something people tend to find really confusing, so make sure you try to understand this. Um, we definitely use this as we go through the semester. Maybe we should use it more so that it becomes clearer, um, but it's super duper handy because you can, they don't have to be the same size table, right, which is super nice. They don't have to have the same column names. They just have to have the same data, okay? So I could really bizarrely, right, think about trying to match price to coupon or something. I can try to make it work, but I'll get very bad results, right? So putting the wrong field in the wrong place is going to be, is not going to give you the right result. But long story short, it's really useful when you want to bring data together, okay? So that's called a join. And I have a demo. Okay. Oh, yeah. And a demo of this. So we're going to pull up our table called drinks. Which is this data in a CSV. And then I'm going to make a table, okay, on the fly for the discounts. Um, and one thing I want to point out, now I think I've said this before, but I have to use with columns to do multiple. But if you notice, even though this is just one statement, I break it up so that it's more readable. Okay, so that's why I have it in kind of multiple rows or, you know, kind of multiple lines. So that it's easier to tell what I'm trying to accomplish. But one thing I'll talk to you on, I do this all the time, um, is forgetting that last comma or adding a comma to extra, right? So you'll get a syntax error. It's sometimes not obvious what the problem is. Yeah. There's no files. Oh, did I miss it? Oh, shoot. Uh, here, I'll copy it. Forgot I have 18 computers today. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, just make sure you only copy over the single file if you've been changing stuff, or it's going to overwrite your file. Okay, it should be there now if you want to grab it. Um, okay, so I have my, let's make sure I actually ran this. Okay, and then I have my discounts table, and now I want to combine them. So just make sure I'm doing the right thing. Yeah. All right, so does anyone remember what I do to combine them? Well, the first thing I'm going to start with is the table. I'm going to say drinks. Then what do I do next? Join. Then what do I do after that? Okay, it is. Yeah. Cafe, right? So we want the first column that has my my joiner, right? So cafe. Then what do I do next? I don't know if this will work in Judo. Uh, sometimes in some uh, in some environments, you can get it to give you help about what the next parameter is. Um, all right, so what do I do for the next thing? Okay, well, which one? Discounts. All right, and then what's the last column? Or what's the last argument? Thanks a lot. So which? Or did you? You know back there? Oh, sure. Yeah, location. Location, yeah. Well, here. Okay, and so now I combine them. Okay, simple as that. Super useful uh, when you want to do that sort of thing. Um, and then now what I can do is because I kind of have that data together. I can actually calculate what is the new prices, right? So in order to do that, I'm going to make an array of the, uh, what should I call it, uh, discounts. And it's called coupon, the word I can never spell, off. Then divide that by 100. Okay. And then so that's going to give me an array with the discounted price. Um, and see the whole thing is there. Yeah. And so now I can actually create a new column that just has the data I kind of actually care about. It's like, what is the price of it when I apply the coupon? Um, and then lastly, oh, yeah. So this is another example that you can also do really dumb things. Um, that seem kind of dumb, but are occasionally useful. Uh, so you can also join it to itself. Oops. Okay. And it's smart enough to tolerate that. This this actually can be useful under kind of semi-unusual conditions. Um, but so it's just kind of good to be aware that you can do this. Um, we won't do it very often. Uh, but you can actually just combine the same table onto itself, and it's just going to duplicate the data, uh, except the data that you're joining on. Sorry. Um, any questions? All right. Uh, I think we're just going to do. I, I really like this one, so maybe I'll try to do this real quick. Look, unforgettable travel experiences. Good God, I thought. I get you. No, go away. I think we're just doing a super short positive. Yeah. So 
Remember, Tuesday is snapped up and it's a Monday. Um, and uh, no lack for a few things. Uh, there is no homework for these today. I don't know if you're going to figure out. No homework for today because it's supposed to be working on projects. So, work on projects. Homework for will be released whenever next Thursday. 